Today, Networking Podcast promotes successful business experts. I'm Tom Riach, known as the king of networking, connecting people throughout the world from my podcast studio in Brazil. And today we talk with Tadia Jacqueline, an entrepreneur, speaker, and business psychology expert, joining us from Austin, Texas. Tadia is CEO of Visceral, a company which helps leaders harness the power of communication. Visceral is where you develop into a sea owner of your words, of your tone, of your impact. Talia, what is the one communication skill that business owners are missing? Tom, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share that with your audience. Um, for everyone listening, one of the biggest things that gets mis underutilized and misunderstood as the most important thing is the use of tonality. Um, so often business owners focus on the perfect pitch in terms of the right words. But if you think of the word pitch, it's a tone and it's an emotion. So I noticed the name of your podcast, too, and where you're the king of the networking pitch or pitching to your audience. And it's uh, it's so interesting. There are all these oxymorons that I look at with regards to communication, like increasing your team's performance but yeah. performance can't be an act it has to be something that they're truly doing um, with their full heart and full sense of ownership and when it comes to communicating whether that is with your team or whether that is with your customers the role of tone is so huge mm -hmm. and it's so misunderstood in terms of how people respond to you and what they really hear when you talk about what you do or when you give direction to your team. They don't hear your words. They hear 7% of your words. Uh, they really if, if, respond. If that. <laughs> if that, and then if it's 7%, you better be really careful with what words you use. But it's really the emotion and the tonality that there's so much psychology behind. And it's interesting, Tom, I find that a lot of business owners actually know the statistics around what the communication breakdown is for those that don't. 93% is nonverbal, is an emotion for the most part, and 7% is verbal, only your words. And while people maybe conceptually know that, very rarely do I see business owners actually apply it, and that is what visceral, that's what our mission is, um, because I don't see a world where really powerful communication um, isn't absolutely essential to your success. And in order to have great communication, you have to understand the psychology of it. I, and I agree with you, but I see, and what I've have seen, you know, what I've recently for years is exactly that. Most business owners or startups, they're, they're focused on the process. They're, they're, they're focused on the thing or the service or whatever. And they really forget, even if they know, as you said, they don't apply that to what they're saying. And Absolutely. really what they're saying is something they deeply understand. I mean, they don't realize that when they're saying that to uh, uh, someone like myself, I may not understand a word they're saying uh, about whatever the thing or the services they're offering. Uh, mm. and, and, and to the point that you mentioned, I saw that on your site, the emotion. Uh, many times we, it seems like we're talking to an ice cube. Mm. My gosh, yes. That's literally. And, you know, people, you know, and they don't understand. And I, I, I find that in my networking, virtual and face-to-face, -face, mm. you're attracted by people before they even open their mouth. Absolutely. I can't agree with you more. Um, when you're in a networking room, it's very, very easy. And you probably do it rather quickly to assess the room and point to the three people that you really want to go introduce yourself to. And the reason for that is because of how they present themselves. It's right. their energy. Right. It's the way that they speak non-verbally mm -hmm. that even attracts you to them. So this is an interesting thought, Tom, since you're bringing up networking. It, it's, it's funny because sometimes we network in groups of maybe 50, 60, sometimes 100 people. Mm -hmm. But as the professional there, as you yourself, the business owner, at the end of that event, there are probably one or two or three people that really stand out in your memory. Right, right. And it's very important to consider why mm -hmm. and how you become one of those people. And most often it's not necessarily the bravado and what they're saying and how they're pitching their services. It's how they present themselves. So I think that's a very interesting thing to think about. I think many times it's what they're not saying. And I, I saw yeah. on your site too, you mentioned the neurons behind networking. Yeah. And 
<laughs> that's a concept. But there's really that's where it really it is. So, you know, networking is is not physical. Uh, yeah. Obviously, people think it is face to face. It is, but but there's just so much going on in two minutes, or should be going on in two minutes. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. You know what is so fascinating about that in terms of the neurons behind it. There's a lot of neuropsychology around how people process you and what you say. And when you're networking, the question that's asked all the time is, what do you do? And what I find so fascinating is that people respond to that with a I am mm -hmm. answer. I am a financial advisor. I am an insurance agent. I am a business owner. But it's a what do you do question. It's not a who are you question. And it's so interesting to me that people define themselves as an identity with their title and their la and the label that they give themselves. And that, in terms of the neuron component, actually, um, it has you very generalized. It has you very um, probably deleted sometimes in people's minds because right. of their incapability of understanding who you are. Now, what you actually do then, you take people, companies, and you train people. Uh, exactly. To line up the, first of all, to identify the neurons and then line them up and use them. Yeah, I, we have a training program around communication, and there are pretty much three components of that. The first is understanding the psychology. How do people process what you say? How does the mind work in a way where you can understand it and apply it? I have a whole background in business psychology, and I've pretty much searched the ends of the earth for psychology that can be applied, not just psychology that's interesting in a concept. So the first component is the psychology of the communication. The second is um, once you have the right tone, we layer on the words. And so the second is more of, it's called synergy, where you actually learn how to have both tonality and the words that match and complement each other where you then become incredibly good at mastering communication and, and, the that, third, and, and you, you help people practice right absolutely absolutely is it's there's not a, a pill a that very, you give them they they can understand it, but they have to practice it's a very hands-on learning experience i'm i have a mentor that once shared with me that everything in business is he called it the flc the failure learning curve <laughs> i agree <laughs> you got to fail, you've got to apply, you've got to do it, and that's how you learn. And I think that is essential when it comes to training. <laughs> now, again, what you do, you do it to, to for persons, to companies, to a mix of everything? It's to companies. Um, I only work mostly with C-suite teams and their sales teams, their mm -hmm. client-facing teams. For their administrative teams and other um, people in their organization, we have more of a communication workshop mm -hmm. um, and a higher-end program. But... I really find that um, a lot of the impact is made with people who are on the front lines when it comes to how they represent the company. And I believe it everyone be. does. It should be. But it's, it should be. <laughs> it yeah. should be. Exactly. And unfortunately, many times we see that it's not. Yeah, that is unfortunate. You know what really is unfortunate, though, Tom? It's when you see companies who have such good intent mm -hmm. and such a good mission, they really want to help, but because of the way they communicate, because they sound like other professionals or other companies in their field, or because what their their words don't line up with their intent and their heart, that's really when it's unfortunate, because then you can't be seen for the good you want to do, right. and I find that those are the companies that I tend to work with more versus the ones that are like, yeah, we just want to hit, you know, 20% growth and <laughs> They're just so focused on the, quick the monetary goals, yeah. Very good. So how can our listeners find you? The best way to find us is um, through our website, visceral, V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L-C-O.com. -C -E mm -hmm. um, there's some really fun information that you'll find on there around the psychology, um, and that's the best way to reach us if you are interested in learning more. Very good. Well, thanks for your time, and thanks for sharing, Talia. Thank you for having me, Tom. This was a fun discussion. Okay. And for our audience, then again, it's Talia Jacqueline. It's T-A-L-I-A, -A, the last name J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E. -E. You'll find her on Visceral. That's Visceral, V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L-C-O.com. And also her own name, TaliaJacqueline.com. 
Cafe Networking is brought to us by Focus Semi Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. <clears throat> More information at their site, focusmi.com. Thanks for listening. Until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast. <laughs>